What's up guys and welcome back to the channel where we learn, do, and talk about photography until we're sick of it. Hopefully today, heavy on the do part. Thank you so much for all of you who stuck around as I spent the last uh, few months over the summer reviewing a new piece of camera kit that I acquired, the Canon EOS R7 camera body. But today, or kicking off my fall foliage photography tour, I'll be traveling all around the state of Indiana here at the peak of fall foliage season to enjoy the colors, take some photographs, and hopefully share that experience with you guys at home. So, uh, so our first stop on the tour is an unplanned stop. Because I'd spent so much time reviewing the camera, I think I felt, was feeling a little out of practice and, and maybe a little unprepared for an extensive photo excursion. Photographically unprepared, I mean. So uh, I stopped at a, a local woods that I'm pretty familiar with. I've made a couple photographs here before. Uh, one that you guys have probably seen, I'll remind you, it's this one here. You can see that what I've got framed up today is something drastically different than that photograph that I made, I think, back in 2020. But it, uh, it is a little bit encouraging to stop someplace familiar and revisit it and, um, you know, compose something different here. So uh, here's what we're looking at for the photo. Um, really, the focus of the photo, I'd say, is this uh, old elm tree. Um, and I like that there's this a branch that's down and it leads from the tree down into the foreground. And then, you know, the other trees around are just sort of accessories um, and then I've let that branch go out of the frame so that it, it, you know, implies a little bit of story that you can't see. So I've got that for a quarter of a second at F11 and ISO 100. I'll take that shot now, uh, feeling a little more confident, and then we'll get on the road and maybe discover something new. Okay, I'm loving that admixture of green and yellow colors, uh, some daisies that are remaining in bloom in the foreground, lots of little details to appreciate in this photo, even though the composition uh, is somewhat simple. But I'm greedy for more, so let's go see what we can find. that first shot I'm feeling thankfully warmed up both photographically and bodily. One thing you might have noticed from that photograph when I'm realizing in retrospect was it probably could have used a little light. I shot that scene uh, completely in shadow but I wanted to be sure to save the best light of the morning for this scene my first plan stop of the day. So I'm here in Vigo County's Fowler Park and so uh, one of the best places in uh, West Central Indiana to spend a morning of photography. And I'm going to show you exactly why that is after a short announcement. From flourishing farmland to bustling cities to natural nooks, Indiana is full of charming little scenes, and that's why I'm proud to announce my 2023 Indiana Charms Scenic Photography Calendar. The Indiana Charms Calendar is a beloved gift among homebound and homesick Hoosiers. It brings your love for Indiana imagery inside, and at $14.99, it's the same price as a generic calendar, even though it's made in Indiana and it ships right to your door. But the first 50 pre-orders of the Indiana Charms calendar are going for $12.99. That's $2 off each calendar at indiana-charms.com. Don't just get organized, get inspired when you order your 2023 Indiana Charms calendar at indiana-charms.com or use the link in the video description. Indiana Charms, all charms all year. Okay, this is one of the first of several photo subjects that Fowler Park has to offer. What I have my camera trained on is this old Pioneer Village. So as you can see, I've got it really low to the ground. The camera's really low and that's to, um, to maximize, to really stretch out that reflection down in the bottom part of the frame so that I'm not contending with the reflection of the sky, uh, really mainly focused on the reflection of these trees. So you won't be able to see my finger indication here very well because we're out at over 200 millimeters. And uh, for a nice tight shot on the village uh, with the, this uh, bright orange tree here on the left. Uh, is this even gonna... And uh, if I zoom out, you can see that there's actually much more to the scene. There's uh, more to the village on, uh, even further than the tree on the left. And then all the way over here on the right, um, there's some more orange. But I kind of wanted to cut the sky out, so I came in nice and tight and decided on this composition right here. 
Now, I also brought a polarizing filter along, so I'm gonna pop the polarizer onto the camera so that I thought we could sort of see the effect of the polarization together. So um, I'll go ahead and throw that on now, and then we can also play with varying the strength of the polarization and see uh, which way we like it best. And here we have it with the polarizer. And that looks like it's maximum strength right there. Okay, I had those at f11 for between a 20th and an 80th of a second, depending on uh, how strong I had the polarization. The, the polarizer does tend to cut a, uh, up to maybe a stop and a half of light uh, out of the exposure. So, um, But I will list the exposure times down at the bottom, and I'll also show you which one was my favorite. Um, however, this, uh, this uh, prairie village is far from the only thing to shoot here at Fowler Park. There's lots of trails behind. I'm not going to explore those, but if you ever stop in, be sure you look at the trails. They're really fantastic with lots of ponds and lakes uh, on the back lot of the park. Of course, this main lake here that you probably noticed has got a nice beach uh, with all kinds of nice scenery around here. And there's a cover bridge here, so I'm going to shoot that cover bridge next. This old uh, covered bridge is just a joy to shoot every time I come here. I'm telling you, if you're coming through Fowler Park or if you're in the area, be sure to stop and take a tour of some of these things as well. But for me, this is a sightseeing tour and I have lots of other things to see. I'll go ahead and grab this shot. I don't think the composition really merits much explanation. And I'm starting to get a little chilly again. I've got the Jones to get back on the road. And between you and me, this is probably not the last covered bridge that we'll see in this video. Okay, fine, I'll take one more shot for these geese. the Matthews or Cumberland Covered Bridge in Matthews, Indiana, and this is just a fantastic scene. But I'm also being somewhat of a tease because I'm going to come back and shoot it this evening when um, it'll be uh, sunset colors and also there's supposed to be some cloud cover coming in uh, right around sunset. I can just barely see it uh, just working its way in from the west. So. Um, also all this, uh, the, the river here is really low, lots of gorgeous uh, plants coming up out of the river and uh, I think I'm gonna have to wade out into the river in order to get the composition that, I'm, uh, that I have in mind. So uh, I'm, I'm anticipating just a fantastic evening of landscape photography that I think will be featured in the next video in this series. But don't worry, I won't leave you dry. On the way here, I found a really cool barn that I think would suit a blue sky photo. So we'll pass the late afternoon here uh, going out and photographing an old barn. Busy, busy road. Okay, this is the barn scene that I promised you, but this is not, is not exactly uh, what I was imagining when I thought of coming back here. I saw it from the uh, other side of the barn, and this is like a great old, really dilapidated barn with a lot of character, great textures in the wood, uh, metal roof. Um, and I had intended to shoot it sort of at wide angle from really close to the barn. And I was scoping out some different perspectives and I am just could not be happier with this one. So looking at what we've got here, it's framed in by these two trees. I really like the barn, that the barn is 
uh, off center so it's not right smack dab in the middle of the frame. Got a perfect sky to complement it. I know that I said we would uh, do a blue sky photo, but I probably spent just a little bit too long scouting out uh, the location for the composition, but I'm glad that I did because I really like this. This guy's not too bad right now. This color close to the horizon, this um, almost greenish hue, I'm not a huge fan of that, but you know, we'll, we'll work the colors a little bit in post-processing and see what we come up with. And speaking of the colors in the sky, uh, the clouds have moved in a lot more quickly than I expected, and uh, the, I've spent so long fussing with this now that um, it's probably getting a bit late, so I think I need to grab the photo, and I'll show you how it turns out right now. I think I gotta pack up and go back to my covered bridge and shoot that. Um, the light should be getting really nice there right about this time and it's about 10 minutes from here. But that means that I'm gonna see you again in the next video so please stay tuned so you can continue following my fall foliage photography tour. Thank you so much for watching and until I see you again you guys keep an eye out and a foot forward. Bye.